This is the Kia Sorento, and you can think of it as being a bit like Meghan Markle because it's Kia climbing the SUV social ladder. So there's Meghan in suits, an actress, you know, it's a bit like the old Sorento. It's, it's pretty nice, but it hasn't quite made it yet. Whereas now the Kia Sorento is like Meghan with Prince Harry. It's trying to be SUV royalty. As a result, though, it does have a price to match its poshness. So the Kia Sorento, it starts from just over £29,000. But if you get it through carway.com, you can save an average of almost £4,500 on one. So if you're thinking about buying a Kia Sorento, make sure you click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen or on the link below the video to go to carwow.com. Now, one of the main reasons you may want a Kia Sorento is if, like the Royals, you've got a big family, this thing and seven seats, so we're going to talk about the passenger space. Now, first of all, I'm going to talk about some of the bad points. So, if you have this glass roof fitted, it does eat into headroom a bit. If you look, I'm 179 centimetres tall, and I haven't got that much space above my head, so someone over six foot may struggle. Without this glass roof, it's perfectly fine. Another thing is, you do sit kind of low, so there's not that much under thigh support, but that's where the problems end, because other than that, it's brilliant back here. So I've got loads of knee room here. Also, the floor is completely flat, so if you get the middle seat, yeah, passengers here won't complain too much. And it's a wide body as well, so there's plenty of space for three across this bench. But my favourite bit is this. Not only can you slide the seats forwards and backwards if you want to flip a bit of space in the back, you can do this, look, you can recline the seats, and boy, can you recline them. Look at this, look at this. It's like being in a limousine. That is so, so good. And some of the features you've got here as well. So yes, there's the typical kind of armrest here with some cup holders. And you've also got big door bins as well. And if you want to carry longer items, I'll show you this now anyway, if I can do it. There we go. You can carry longer items through there as well. If you've just been shopping at Ikea, need to bring something back home. Now, let's talk about the space in the very back. Now this is quite interesting because on this particular car you can only really get into the back from the left hand side because there's no tilt and slide option for the middle row on the other side. So there you go, push that forward and it's quite easy to get in. Then you'll see if I just sit back here. Now the great thing about this is that this seat is in its furthest back position and I still got decent knee room. Headroom is tight, look, but I can slouch a bit and I do have enough room. You can carry adults in the back of here if you need to. I mean, it's not ideal. I am sitting quite low, but yeah, it's okay. And children will be more than fine. And there's some creature comforts as well. So look, I've got control of my own air conditioning system back here on this particular car. There's some storage here and storage here as well. It's all very good. Now let's talk about storing bigger items. So let's move on to the boot. I shall just clamber out of here. Like I said, you have to do it this way round. Pop that back. Ow! I just whacked my head. I just whacked my head. And it's so, how stupid of me, because the door opening is actually quite large, as you can see. Anyway. <laughs> right, so. Now, if you've got all seven seats in place, you don't have much boot space. The room you've got there is about the same as a Ford Fiesta, but it's a bit more awkward, obviously. For instance, I can only fit a small suitcase with all seven seats in place. In a Volkswagen, I can tick on all space and fit the larger suitcase. Yeah. Now, you can, of course, make it bigger. It's that easy to do. You just fold the seats down. And it's that easy. Done. And then look, wow. That's a big space, loads of room now, and there's some nice features as well, like, look, there's no real load lip to lift stuff across. It's all very square and flat. You have the odd tethering point about the place, which is great, but if you need to carry even more stuff, then you can fold the middle row down just from here, because you've got levers, which is nice and easy. And then you're left with a nice, flat, low bay, which is absolutely massive. In fact, it's so big, I can clamber through it to get to the front, so, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> there's loads of room. Oh, I've got to negotiate this now, which is not so simple, without getting the seats dirty. Oh no, sorry Kia. Look, can I do it? Come on. Oh, <laughs> that was quite elegantly done. Now there's more room back here for storing stuff. So the door bins are massive. They can hold a large bottle of water, just like those in the back. And you've got a huge cubby under here with a special little tray. There's also some cup holders here, more on those later. And the glove box is a decent size. Well. It would be if it wasn't taken up by these huge manuals, which I'm probably going to pull a muscle trying to lift them. So massive. Yeah, it's an all right size. 
Now, if you want more detail on this cost practicality, click on the pop out button in the top right hand corner of the screen or on the link below the video to watch my detailed practicality review. You'll be able to see just how much stuff you can fit in this car's boot, how easy it is to fit a child seat, and see what it's like with adults in the back. Now, let's talk about the interior design because I do actually really like it. So, it feels suitably posh and upmarket, this car. I like the fact that the materials on the dash are super squidgy and this stitching effect makes it look like it's made out of leather. The steering wheel feels expensive as well and everything is just so sturdy. It feels like a substantial car. In terms of equipment levels, do not get the entry level car. What you want is the KX2 because that's got all you need. So you've got stuff like leather seats and they're heated in the front but also in the rear. You've got all round parking sensors. You've also got an eight inch infotainment screen. The entry level car has a seven inch screen and it comes with satellite navigation as standard and the system is actually pretty good. I do like it, it's dead easy to navigate with these shortcut buttons and the graphics are nice and clear they're not the sharpest but they're by no means bad and if you want you can just hook up your mobile phone to it as well and use apple carplay or android auto it's all very simple now if you want more detail on this car's infotainment system and for another look around the cabin click on the pop out banner in the top right hand corner of the screen or on the link below the video for my detailed interior view of this car now this particular model i've got here is the kx3 and it's got pretty much all the bells and whistles so it has stuff like that panoramic glass sunroof it's also got an automated tailgate and i'll just shut it now here from the comfort of the driver's seat. It's also got some other bits and pieces on it as well, such as, oh look, you get wireless charging for your mobile phone, though my phone doesn't actually have wireless charging. Another feature it has as well is the Harman Kardon stereo. This does bump up the price though, so this particular car costs almost £39,000. Well, that's the list price actually. I actually plugged it into CarWow and I got an offer back for £34,500, which is, well, it's not bad considering how much car you're getting for your money. Now then, it's time for the car wow five annoying things about this car. The manual version of the Sorento can tow a brake trailer that weighs two and a half tonnes. Unfortunately, the automatic can only tow one that weighs two tonnes. Ah. It's great that this car's sunroof actually opens to let some air inside the cabin, but considering the amount of glass you've got here, it doesn't seem to open all that wide. It's a shame. Kia gives you an adjustable cup holder which is good. Unfortunately, it just doesn't adjust small enough to hold a can of energy drink tightly. The paint finish on this car is not great. It's all orange peely. In fact, it's so dimply, it's as though this car had really bad acne as a teenager and it's all been left a bit pockmarked. For some reason, while you have an indicator for the speed that you set for the speed limiter, if you switch over into cruise control, there is no speed limit indication of what you've set it at. So you just kind of guess. Thankfully, this car has plenty of cool features, which helps make up for all this. Here's five. All Sorentos have four-wheel drive with a central lockable differential for added off-road grip. Ooh. Being a Kia, the Sorento gets the firm's industry-leading seven-year warranty, which is perfect if you want to keep your car for a long time. The hill descent control automatically applies the car's brakes as you're going down a hill to make it nice and easy for you to descend smoothly. To keep things nice and tidy, the car's load cover is neatly stowed away underneath the false floor. There we go. It's quite easy to get out. Look. Ta-da! To prevent you getting dazzled by the sun, the visors are really big. But there's this extra little gap here that might let a bit of light through. But don't worry, there's an extra visor. When you're driving this Kia Sorento, you definitely feel like you're in something substantial and solid. It feels safe, it feels secure, it feels what you want an SUV to feel like. Also, it's very good over bumps of suspension to smooth them out. It's, it's nice and soft and squidgy and so are the seats. Though the downside of that, of course, is that when you get this thing into a corner, it does roll about a bit like you'd expect an SUV to with soft suspension like this car. Also the steering, it's a little bit, yeah, Vague. There's no sports in this sports utility vehicle, but really, do you care? Is that what you're after? You know, it's a nice, easy cruiser. It's generally quite quiet. You do get a bit of wind whistle when you're going fast from the big wing mirrors and tire roar a little bit on the motorway, but perhaps the noisiest thing is this look. It's that diesel engine. So it's a 2.2 litre and it's got 200 horsepower, which sounds like a lot, but then this car's quite heavy, so it does 0 to 60 in about nine seconds. You get it as standard with a six-speed manual gearbox, which is all right. This has got the eight-speed auto, and it's worth upgrading to. Now, it's not the fastest responding unit, so you put your foot down, and you do have to wait for a bit, but it's generally okay. It, it really suits this car's relaxed character. I think, generally, this car's pretty nice to drive. It's going for miles and miles, isn't it? Comfy seats help, too. 
In terms of economy, well, this particular car is supposed to get 43 miles per gallon, but I'm getting 33 miles per gallon. Obviously, being an SUV, you sit up high, the view out forward's good. Bit of a blind spot here. The view out the back window is all right, and generally, it's very easy to see what's going on around you, so it's not actually that hard to maneuver in town. Now, if you click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen or on the link below the video, you can go to carwire.com for more information on the Kia Sorento and to see how much you can save on one, or any car for that matter. So then, what's my final verdict on this car? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the Kia Sorento. It's a sufficiently large and sufficiently posh seven-seater SUV. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it. Click on our logo to subscribe to this channel. On the video window for more content and on the deals box to the right to see how much money you can save on a new car at carwow.com. Now, did you spot the Easter egg in this video? It was the picture of the city of Sorrento on my mobile phone in the car's cubby.